Joining me now for more is Ingrid uh, Gafano, a Kempra Equity, a Kempen, excuse me, Equity Analyst, Life Sciences. Um, okay, so what's your take on what we're going to see from CureVac when they're they're behind about five months when they finally release uh, their results? Yeah, Ingrid? I think what we can expect to see for CureVac might be slightly different than what we saw for their mRNA peers like BioNTech and Moderna. While we do expect to see them reporting sort of a protection rate very high, let's say between 80 to 95%, we could see that coming a little bit down because we have to keep in mind the BioNTech and Moderna, uh, they reported, they, they ran their trials a little while ago when we didn't really have the high prevalence of these new variants. So we can't see the number coming slightly down, but it's also good to keep in mind that CureVac is very much aware of that. So we also expect the company to try to break down those numbers and let us know really what is the kind of level of efficacy that we are seeing for different variants that are coming into play for the trial. Yeah, and I wonder, because we haven't seen what Moderna and Pfizer, they've said a little bit of data about the variants. Um, are we, is it a read through from CureVac to Pfizer and Moderna? Yeah, the data that we have seen so far for the variants is indeed very limited. Uh, it's limited, however, very interesting and exciting to look at. That It seems that the mRNA vaccines are conferring some protection to another variant as well. It's difficult to say because this, and this, the vaccines are not really comparable per se, uh, but I think it's fair to assume as they are very similar modality that we could see something similar for the CureVac vaccine as well. Um, what do you think it's going to be? Like, is it going to be good enough to restore some confidence? I mean, it seems like we saw Norway, Denmark, just shutting down Astra altogether, question marks about J&J. &J. Um, is it going to be an mRNA story in Europe solo? Well, it looks like it's shaping up to be. I think we have seen as well that the European Union is trying to keep up and uh, purchase new mRNA vaccines and trying to strike new contracts in that front. So it does look like Europe, uh, Europe is also positioning itself to start vaccinating people with mRNA vaccines. Of course, that's an important thing, especially looking after the willingness to vaccinate in some of European countries was going down when they were trying to vaccinate the population with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Do so definitely, I think that going forward, it will be an mRNA story. Do you think that we're going to see, and it's been floated, that those who took Astra are going to get the second shot of an mRNA? Well, that's not something that we have really investigated just yet. You might have some anecdotes coming up uh, of people that are receiving two kinds of vaccines. Um, it's not something that we can exactly expect to happen. It's not something that we are precisely studying mm -hmm. and trying to understand how it works. But also, we have not seen any pushback otherwise. Fair point. There doesn't be any concern about giving people two shots of different vaccines. If we do go more of a just mRNA situation for Europe, how, how, how long is it going to take then to get some kind of herd immunity? Well, um, I do think it will take quite a while. You know, looking at the latest updates from the World Health Organization, the vaccinations in Europe are some, somewhere between 10 to 15 percent for patients receiving only one dose. The, the goal of Europe is still to try and vaccinate up to 70 percent of the population before the summer. So I guess expectations is really to have at least those 70 percent uh, already safe before mid-year. In reality, I do think we can expect something slightly different because we do see that vaccination rates are just not going as fast as we were expecting them to go. 